RADCAM is an explainable AI method used to explain convolutional neural networks. It does this by producing heat maps which show the most important pixels or regions in an input image used for the model's classification. In the previous video, we discussed the theory and intuition behind the method in depth. In this lesson, we're going to apply the method using Python and the PyTorch GradCam package. This will involve exploring a few different options in terms of the layers and classes of the network that we want to explain. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that this lesson is part of a wider explainable AI course for computer vision. It's completely free and you can find a link to it in the description. You'll find the article version for this lesson as well as many coding resources. There's also a paid version of the course, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Now, as we go through the notebook, I'm going to focus on the output of the package as well as how to interpret the different plots. So I won't explain every single line of code. And if you want a more detailed explanation, then take a look at the article version for this lesson. Okay, so we're working in the GradCam notebook in the gradient folder. So we start with our imports and we have sort of some standard Python imports like NumPy, Py, uh, matplotlib. Um, we have this hugging face import because we're going to be loading our model directly from hugging face. And then, yeah, we have all our sort of GradCam imports. We have our main function as well as a few helper functions, which we will get into more detail when um, discussing the code. And then just to end, um, I have a few kind of functions that, that I wrote. Um, uh, we load the image data set uh, class from the data sets Python file. Uh, this is just a PyTorch data set uh, class and we load a CNN architecture from the network's Python file. And these are just the same sort of classes that were used to train the model that we're going to load. So yeah, we load our model from hugging face. Um, we do some standard things like move it to a CPU and then set it to evaluation mode. So I'm just gonna run those imports. Um, yeah, then load our model and you should see a model summary in a little bit. Okay, so we have our model summary. This tells us that we have a three layer convolutional neural network. This summary is quite important as it'll allow us to select the layers that we want to create heat maps for. For example, model conv layer six will select a third or final convolutional layer in the network. So this model was trained on the pot plants data set. This is a image classification data set where we tried to predict the names of four different pot plants. When we introduced this data set in a earlier lesson of the course, we saw some peculiar behavior. Specifically, yeah, you can see that we achieved 94% accuracy on the validation set, but only 70% on the test set. This decrease in accuracy comes from Rudo being misclassified as Bayer. We hypothesized that this had something to do with the pots. During the data collection process, Rudo's pot was dropped and broken. It seems as though replacing the red pot has confused the model. We're going to use GradCam to see if this is true. Okay, so we start by loading the test set from the pot plants data set. You can also see we have our four plant names here, Rudo, Bayer, Greg, and Yuki. Um, and yeah, so we pass the data set pods into our, and the number of classes into our image data set class to create a PyTorch dataset object. Then we sort of just get one sample image from this dataset. And 
yeah, we do some formatting in terms of both the, the, the target variable um, and the prediction and the sort of sample image. And then we just display that all together. And yeah, you can see the example, uh, you can see the input sample image. And you can see in this case, the, the target was Rudo, but the model has predicted it as an image of Bayer. And yeah, essentially we're going to use GradCam to see which pixels in this input image the model is using to make this prediction. And in this case, it's an incorrect prediction. And yeah, just before we get to that, um, we have a few helper functions. So the first is this get canny edge function. And essentially what that does is it, it takes a, a normal RGB image as input and creates this edge map, um, which yeah, just basically gives the most prominent edges in the image. And you'll see later that we will overlay the grad cam heat map on top of this edge map. And it just creates a, a cleaner visualization and helps us understand what's going on. And then, yeah, just another helper function. This will plot um, our input image next to our grad cam visualization, which will be the heat map overlaid on top of a edge map. Finally, we can move on to creating our grad cam heat maps. As mentioned, we'll explore a few different options in terms of the layers and classes that we want to explain. Typically with GradCam, we focus on the class that had the highest predicted load jet. And as we saw with our sample image, this does not necessarily mean the target class. Also, we tend to focus on the final layer in the convolutional neural network or the final convolutional layer. And we define both of those aspects using, using this code. So both the classes and the layers should be lists when working with this GradCam package. And the classifier output target function is a, is a helper function that helps us specify the class of interest. And in this case, we're using class one as that was the predicted class for our sample image. And also just going back to our model summary, um, we select the conv layers six, which is the third and final convolutional layer in our network. Okay, so we create a cam object using the grad cam function. And to do that, we pass in our models and our layers that we are interested in explaining. And in this case, it's just going to be a list with one layer. And then we use that object to create a heat map. And to do that, we pass in our, our image. Um, we need to unsqueeze it to add an additional uh, dimension for, for batch size. And we pass in our classes of interest. And again, this is just going to be uh, a list with one class. And yeah, we're gonna print out the shape and display the heat map. So you can see the shape is um, excluding the, the batch dimension. It's 256 by 256 pixels, which is the same dimensions as our sample image. And yeah, you can see our kind of raw heat map and already you can start to see uh, a very important region of pixels. So yeah, let's see if we can use our helper functions to kind of get a clearer visualization. So to do that, we first get our edge image um, using that get canny edge function, helper function. Um, and then we're going to use the, the grad camps packages helper function, which is the show cam on image, where essentially we're just going to overlay our heat map on top of that edge image and then finally, we're going to use the our uh, plot grad cam helper function just to plot the, the sample image and visualization side by side. And yeah, you can clearly see 
that the model is using the pixels from the pot to make this prediction. This confirms our suspicion. By taking pictures of the plants in only one of the pots, we have introduced bias into our training data set. The model has learned to classify the plants based on the color of their pots and not the plants inherent characteristics. This means when we moved Rudo to a different color pot in the test set, the model became confused. We'll come back to this conclusion when discussing the general insights of GradCam. For now, let's see what else we can do with this GradCam package. Okay, so firstly, we have been dealing with the last convolutional layer in the network. Um, but really, you can apply GradCam to any of the convolutional layers or even a combination of all of the layers. So, for example, yeah, we have a list of all three layers in the network. And then we just apply the same code as before, except now this layers variable will be the list of, of all three layers. And you can see the output is very similar to before. And what you're looking at yeah, is a weighted average of all of the feature maps in the convolutional neural network. So instead of having just the kind of feature maps from one, from one uh, layer, we are including the feature maps from all three layers. And yeah, if you want to look at the layers individually, um, essentially you just have to loop over the, the different layers in the, the list of layers. Um, and yeah, then kind of create a heat map for every single one of those layers. And you can see the output here for the convolutional layer one, two, and three. Um, you can see in each case, it does look kind of different, but you can still see that kind of the most important region is the pot. And so we can get a very similar conclusion using any layer in the convolutional neural network. Another approach um, is to do a similar thing, but using multiple classes. So again, yeah, we just have a list of all four classes, uh, which will be the different pot plant names. And we apply the same code as before, uh, except now this targets value is going to be a list of classes. So again, we are getting very similar output. And what is happening here is it's a, a weighted average based on the size of the output logits. And um, this is the, the output for our sample image, or this image over here. And you can see that the logit for uh, class one or the, the second pot plant is much larger in comparison to the other logits. And so this class is going to get a much higher weight than the other classes. And so essentially we're creating the same heat map that we saw before when we just focused on the, the predicted class as our, as our class of interest. So not really creating anything interesting yet, but in some cases, this, this might produce more interesting heat maps when, say, you have um, features or multiple classes in the same image, you could see different regions uh, popping up. And finally, just to, just to end, um, we run the same code as before, but just using a random yeah, just using a random image for each of our classes. Um, and just to sh see what other kind of like insight we can, we can get. So you can see for our first two classes, the important region is, is still the pot, maybe some background information coming into play. And then for the other classes, you can see that Okay, maybe the, the pot is still important, 
but the model looks like it's also using the actual plant to, to make a prediction. And the same thing for our final pot plant, uh, Yuki. You can see the, the pot is important, but some of the, the plant is, is coming up. And yeah, I just wanted to show you one more sort of interesting example. Um, so in this case, we have an image of Greg in his green pot. Um, but yeah, the model is making an incorrect prediction as an image of Rudo. And we look at the heat map, we can, we can kind of see why. The model is using the pixels from this red vase or some other kind of object. And essentially, yeah, because when we train the model, Rudo was in a red pot and obviously the model's not very good and it's making this incorrect prediction uh, because in this case, it's relying on the color of this random object, which is not even a pot for a plant. So I think it's safe to conclude that the model is relying on the color of the pots to make predictions. As discussed, this is bias introduced in the training data set. I think the key point is that if we had not dropped Rudo's pot, we, had, we would not have picked this bias up in the evaluation metrics. This is because the same bias would be present in the training, evaluation, and test set. So it is really identifying this kind of bias where grad cam shines. It can also provide some other insights. For example, we may not have this systematic bias in our training data, but we may have uh, incorrect predictions for a specific instance, which we can also debug using GradCam. Another benefit is that we can learn about our network, what features it's using, and whether we could potentially simplify the net. All of these insights are valuable as they can help us build more efficient and robust models. But I think the key takeaway from this video is that GradCam can help us correct and improve a model before it is put into production, potentially saving us a lot of time and money. As I mentioned, this video is part of a larger course where I go into detail on explainable AI methods for computer vision. This includes methods like occlusion, SHAP, GradCam, guided backpropagation, deep lift, and integrated gradients. You can access all of the course content for free, but there's also a paid version of the course. With that, you'll get access to a certificate for the course, quizzes, all of the videos ad-free, and an ebook, which will allow you to access all of the course content offline.